NBA rivalries are the worst in all of sports. And this video doesn't seem to think that much different. Three original Northeast teams have never been particularly fond of each other. Sorry, Brooklyn, you don't count. Same this goes to the Texas mm. Triangle, the two LA teams. Yeah. I don't think any of those matchups, except for maybe the Sixers and the Celtics, qualify as a full-on rivalry. Yeah, Six, Sixers Celtics is like the closest. Spurs and Mavericks are probably like the ones who have faced each other in the playoffs the most out of like all the Texas team. I mean, Spurs and Rockets have faced each other in the playoffs too. This isn't to say the NBA hasn't had rivalries before because it certainly has. Yeah. Jordan's Bulls versus the Bad Boy Pistons, LeBron's yeah. Cavs versus Golden State, the Bulls versus the Knicks in the 90s. All those rivalries I mentioned <laughs> are specific to their own time. Yeah. They haven't endured. They don't really last that long. And I think a part of the problem too is like, there's only a few franchises like we, aka the Warriors, are third all time in championships and we're still like 10 off from <laughs> the next placement. And we just, <laughs> we just separated ourselves at the lone spot in number three from the Bulls. There isn't any consistency between NBA franchises matching against each other. It just seems like the only one that's really defined is like Celtics and Lakers. In terms of a sports league's lifespan, it's that's actually very short. not that long. It's actually on the shorter side. Yeah. In professional baseball, the National League was founded in 1876 and the American League was founded in 1901. Similarly, the NFL was founded in 1920. And if we go across the pond, the English Football League was founded in 1888. The Italian and the NHL was... La Liga and the Spain NHL is older too. I remember the French correctly. League won in 1930. It's also important to note that many rivalries in European football actually predate these leagues' founding. For example, right. Barcelona and Real Madrid first met in 1902. Rivalries above everything else take About time to develop. <laughs> the NBA had its first season in 1946, and of the 11 teams that participated, only three still exist today, and only two are still in their original city. The NBA is full yeah. of young franchises. Because now we're in the Bay Area. <laughs> so. And to illustrate this point, of the current 30 been NBA since like the teams, 60s only or 70s, of whatever them it is, have been in the city they currently call home since 1980. Compare that to the NFL, where 22 teams have been in their current city since 1980. 25 of the 30 teams have played in their current city since 1980, with the exceptions being the Rays, Marlins, Nationals, Diamondbacks, and Rockies. It's and also now one more. That while the NFL and MLB have more teams in their respective cities for longer, those teams are often significantly older than NBA teams as well. The the average age of the 18 NBA teams I mentioned earlier is 58 years. The average age of the 22 NFL teams, 71 years. Damn. And the 25 baseball teams, 87 years. Rivalries are built up over generations of meetings. Yeah. But what about the MLS? The MLS is an even younger league than the NBA, being founded in only 1993. In fact, 30% of MLS players are older than the league itself, and yet the MLS has managed to establish several strong rivalries. I'm from Portland, and I can tell you right now, Portlanders hate the Whitecaps, and especially the Sounders far more than they hate any NBA team. I believe it. Yes, I believe it. The Sounders rivalry <laughs> does go back further than the MLS. The Atlantic Cup, California Classico. See, but like, but like, that's the thing though, because like, because like, even if we're, we're bringing the the MLS into the equation, it's a matter, it's a matter of, because like the Blazers are pretty much like never com competing or at least not like legitimately competing because like the first round is usually a big snooze fest in the nba compared to like other leagues you don't get a real rivalry until you have some stakes they face each other in the playoffs like whether it's in the nfl or the nhl or you know the nba but not as much but since we're talking about the rivalries that are good or in the case of the mlb you know you have that race for the division that can get a little intense because like us and the Angels had that race in 2014, and then also in the early 2000s, those races and all that. Of course, Mariners fans don't really like us. They're like one of the few fan bases that actually root against us in the MLB because of the fact that we've kept them from making the playoffs multiple times. It's all about stakes, and it's all about volume. All feel much more defined than any NBA rivalry outside of Lakers Celtics. So why right. can the MLS build rivalries, but the NBA can't? Soccer, it also has a lower volume, so it's going to be a lot higher of stakes and a lot more special when they score, whereas the NBA has such a high volume. You almost need to have less games with basketball in order for it to really give you all those stakes. Then it'll make that game matter a lot more. Basketball is the easiest sport to enjoy casually. 
Now, what do I mean by that? Well, essentially, mm, you I enjoy suppose. watching the sport and you enjoy watching a team. In most cases, you're happy when the team wins, sure, but relatively indifferent when they lose. And basketball is the easiest sport to enjoy in this way. In fact, I, I mean, but it just depends on the person, though. <laughs> you can say that about anyone. I mean, unless there's, like, actual data about, like, casuals tuning into the NBA more so than, like, other sports or any other leagues. Like, you can say that about anyone. <laughs> Really, because there's casuals in all, all in every league and every sport and every thing out, every game out there. <laughs> Most teams run ninety percent high pick and roll, drive and kick, or isolation. They may have sets that they use, but the majority of them can be listed down to the three concepts I mentioned before. I mean, the sure, I guess. Uh, Soccer may have well, an yeah. here, especially yeah. abroad, <laughs> but in the states, NBA that, stars that much is true. <laughs> yeah, because stars can govern the results of <laughs> a team a lot in the NBA or at least when it comes to basketball a lot easier than baseball or hockey or football unless you're talking about like quarterbacks for football but it's a lot easier if you're an NBA player there's less players on the court and also because stars get more minutes because even like the NHL the NHL only has like one extra skater on well no 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 not even not even they have um, the extra player on the ice is the goaltender. Yeah, the goaltender. <laughs> and then five skaters, but you can only really be on the ice like at most a minute at a time and really it's like somewhere between 30 seconds and a minute before your before your skills start to deteriorate. So like, you know, for all the stars they usually get like 20 minutes of ice time a game, or at least the forwards, the defensemen will probably get like closer to like 25 minutes a game. Yeah. Brad is considered by many to be one of, if not the best baseball player in the world. And he's had this reputation for basically his whole career. Yet in his decade plus with the Angels, they've only zero been playoff series win. Time, and zero playoff wins. <laughs> by Kansas City. Additionally, the NBA has only 450 <laughs> players compared to the NFL's 1,696 and the MLB's 1,088. And soccer, well. <laughs> Yeah, 450 much easier to stay familiar with. On the other yeah. hand, you have baseball, which is the polar opposite of the NFL. It takes place during the summer when school is out and the weather is nice, and the MLB season has so many games that it basically forces their fans to dedicate a huge amount of yeah. time to keep up with their team. If Side note, the MLB should shorten their season, honestly. <laughs> but, whole nother video. There are enough games that you aren't overly attached to any individual regular season game, but there's also not so many that it requires a huge time sink to watch most of it. And also with its popularity, it's not as niche because the NHL is a lot more niche. But also just also hockey is a lot more random as a sport because of the lower volume. So you're going to be more invested in hockey in general unless you're a casual. So like, you know, I think every league needs to cater to its specific sports in a way. Basketball plays best to casual fans because soccer doesn't. If you've ever been to a soccer match of a well-supported I mean, club, you know this. Because soccer fan culture <laughs> actively encourages hardcore fandom. This is the case both in the States and especially around the world. If you want examples, in the U.S., the Timbers Army and Emerald City supporters are two good examples. Boca Juniors, River Plate, St. Pauli, Borussia Dortmund, Liverpool, Millwall, Red Star, Belgrade, Lazio, Besiktas, Galatasaray, and many, many, many. I cannot stress this many enough. <laughs> <laughs> Many more. At a regular season NBA game, well, pick the right game and you could probably take a nap in the stadium, even if it's sold out. It's very sanitized. And that's Although given some of the prices of some of these NBA games, or at least going to Chase Center, <laughs> you don't really want to pay hundreds of dollars just to take a nap in an arena. <laughs> but better fan culture can't be the only reason, right? Regular season baseball games aren't that lively, so what's holding the NBA back? The structure of the NBA doesn't help facilitate rivalries. What do I mean by this? Well, yeah. we discussed the length of the season earlier. Yeah. But the NBA structure and playoffs as a whole don't help either. This is why, honestly, you should have like two NBA games per week as opposed to having like three or four for each team. Just for the simple fact that there's a little bit more entertainment value and a lot more stakes. And then also for the playoffs, I feel like they should make the first round back to being a five-game series as opposed to being a seven-game series. Their biggest rivals are their divisional rivals. Seahawks, Niners, oh, yeah. Bears, Packers, Yankees, Red Sox, Dodgers, Giants. Basically the whole NFC East, AFC West, and AFC North. And it makes sense because in the NFL and the MLB... I mean, you still do get your, like, inter-division rivals, like 49ers, Cowboys... 
And then in the 70s, like Raiders and Steelers, even like uh, Broncos and Patriots, to be honest. I'm pretty sure every Bronco fan and least favorite team is us. So, <laughs> but still, they had a rivalry with the Patriots because they played each other at like high stakes multiple times. So, and also Brady versus Manning. In the MLB, only 12 teams make the playoffs. And that's a new thing this year because between yeah. 2022 and 2012, it was only 10. And from 2011 to 93, it was only eight. And from 93 to 1969, it was only four. And shoot, before 1969, they said, what playoffs? And just played right. the World Series. Right. And even at 12, winning your division is huge because the top two division winners get a buy into the divisional series. Yeah. The NFL is the same. Only 14 teams make it. Top division winner gets a first round buy. And the other three get home field advantage in the wild card games. Right. This makes division games <laughs> incredibly valuable. And that is how you facilitate rivalries. Not to mention there's only 17 games in the season for the NFL. The NBA lets 20 teams into the postseason, and divisions are borderline meaningless. Worthless. You win your division in the NBA, you get a division winner banner. That's it. Honestly, I wonder if the NBA should probably, like, lower... Because even though the Heat had, like, that big run to the finals last year, and, you know, the bottom two seeds that make it in from the play-in can get invigorated... You know, like the Lakers, they beat the Grizzlies, and then they ended up going to the conference final. I wonder, honestly, the NBA could probably potentially benefit off of, like, having the uh, sixth, or the, what is it? Maybe, like, the fifth through eighth seeds be in the play-in as opposed to the seventh through tenth seeds. Just because then, at that point, then you're making it more exclusive, and then you're able to, like, give it... I mean, I don't know. This is not very well thought out, just because I'm I've been very plugged out just in general, when it comes to sports <laughs> in recent years, just compared to usual, except like the NHL, to be honest. But <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like there's a lot of structural things that could be worked out. Before 2006, 2007, division winners were guaranteed the top seeds in the conference. This changed after 2006, when Dallas and San Antonio had the two best records in the Western Conference, but because of the rule, they were the first and fourth seeds, meaning they had to play each other in the second round. This was remedied the following year, allowing the best record outside of the division winners to be seated in the top four alongside the division winners based on record. So it's all good. Problem solved, right? Nope. <laughs> this is relatively uncommon, but it has cropped up a few times over the years, with the fourth seed division winner having a worse record than the fifth seed, and thus they don't get home court advantage despite being the fourth seed. So why are they even the fourth seed? <laughs> <laughs> In short, the NFL and the MLB have fostered division rivalries by making winning your division tied to postseason seeding, making every division game valuable. The NBA has made its divisions close to meaningless in regards to postseason seeding, and thus division rivals aren't a thing in the NBA. But what about soccer? Again. Well, around the world, soccer leagues function very differently from North American leagues. Right. Most all soccer leagues don't even have a postseason, and the champion right. well, league is determined by who has the most points at the conclusion of the season. Yeah, this might they, seem they, like yeah. rivalries would be hard to develop and maintain, especially if one team is going through a rough patch. Nope. But in reality, it's the opposite. Uh, why are you showing even that? If your team has no chance to win a championship, you can still prevent your rival from winning one. Exactly. This happens in college football all the time. Exactly. 2007 <laughs> backyard brawl, anyone? Pittsburgh finished <laughs> that season <laughs> five and seven and didn't even go to a bowl game and yet it's one of the most fondly remembered seasons in pit history because they denied their arch rivals a chance at a national championship the same goes for soccer example leeds united they haven't been a premier league title contender in two decades but their fans would love nothing more than to take points off their rivals manchester united and to hurt them in the title chase or potentially keep them out of a champions league qualifying i mean that that also but i mean i mean he's right but that also happens that also happens in MLB, like for us, for like us, the Raiders, you know, contributed to the demise of the 49ers 2014 season. We beat them. <laughs> Raiders 49ers isn't the same as like Raiders Broncos or Raiders Chiefs or Raiders Chargers. But like, you know, and then also the fact that like the A's, they contributed to the Giants um, missing the postseason in like 2015 or something like that, I remember correctly. I mean, those are those are different scenarios, I guess, but... But what about Man United in this scenario? Well, what I said earlier about a bad team denying a good team a championship, the opposite is true as well. For anyone unfamiliar with how international soccer leagues work, finishing near the bottom of the league is far more devastating than in the NFL or the NBA. You have the worst record in the NFL or NBA, you get a high draft pick. 
You finish generational the worst record in soccer, you get relegated to a lower league. Imagine <laughs> if the worst NBA team last year got sent to the G League. That's the closest comparison I can give for the NBA. And in the Leeds Man United rivalry, Man United would love nothing so more than Le to help kick Leeds. Leeds out of the Premier yeah, League. Exactly. Even though both teams are at the opposite ends of the table, they both have something to gain from the game. Something like this isn't really possible in the NBA because if your team's bad and you beat a rival, I mean, good for you, but unless it knocks them from the fourth seed to the fifth seed or from the automatic qualifiers to the play-in tournament, it really doesn't mean much. And if you're bad, you probably want your rival to beat you because then you'll get a better shot at a higher draft pick. But what are some immediate things we can do to fix this? Well, unfortunately, the most needed fix is time and, well, that isn't immediate. So how about in the short term? Well, the NBA needs to make divisions mean something, anything, really. Easiest fix would be to give the three division winners home court advantage in the first round. That's at least something. Yes, every once in a while, a team with a better record wouldn't have home court advantage, but that's the way it is in the NFL, and they seem to be doing just fine. But honestly, outside of just waiting and making divisions more valuable, I'm not sure there is a fix. Shortening the season might help, makes games more valuable, and will probably get fans more invested, but it also means less revenue for the players and for the league, so that's out. Well... I mean, there are workarounds to revenue, or at least there should be workarounds to revenue. I mean, I don't know. I guess because they're just so structured around like revenue and uh, on on the revenue that they're like projected and slash make. But like, there's there's a way. There's a way to make it work. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, there's a way to make it work. Create a fan environment more akin to soccer? Probably impossible because I don't think the NBA wants smoke bombs and flares at their games. And like I said earlier, basketball plays to casual fans and casual fans aren't exactly the type to bring banners and sing songs and do chants. So will the NBA ever be able to build rivalries on par with soccer, baseball, and football? But another thing, the rest of the league, and I think this is starting to, this is starting to play up a little bit more, but the rest, there needs to be more than like two franchises in the NBA, two to five, there's only like two to five franchises, really, at this point in the NBA who have like legitimately had a long amount of time of success, or at least a noticeable amount of time of success. So that's why that's, that's, a, that's another, that's another issue, I feel. But I don't know, it's just complicated. Soccer, absolutely not. Fans are just way too passionate about their clubs, and I don't ever see NBA fans reaching that level of passion. Baseball and football, however, I think the jury is still out. It will take time, maybe a long time, but if the NBA can stop teams from constantly relocating and put more importance on divisional games in the regular season, then maybe. I do think, however, the NBA has one rivalry in its back pocket, one that they could and should make happen sooner rather than later. One that would have history and hatred behind it from both fan bases. One that I think would transcend Lakers Celtics as the NBA's best rivalry. <laughs> Oklahoma City versus Seattle. Make it happen, Adam Silver. Make it happen. Uh, I think the NBA being far more star driven than other leagues doesn't help. I hear a lot of basketball fans say they're fans of player. Yeah, yeah, that's true. They're like, Wherever, wherever he goes, I go type B. Because basketball, even though it is a team sport, it's not as much of a team sport as hockey or football or baseball or soccer. Because that's the other thing. Like, the NHL has the same, but, like, hockey is such a, like, is such a lower volume and therefore higher stakes and more luck-based compared to every other sport. And therefore, that's why you see, like, you know, the Panthers upsetting the Bruins. Just for the fun of it, let's also take a look at this video from a former NBA player. Another part of this in the post-LeBron Steph era is rivalries. And I think what helped build the 80s uh, and the NBA in the 80s was, was Magic and Larry individually, of course, and Lakers Celtics as a team, right? And I think in the modern era, that Cavs Warriors thing, huge. Steph LeBron, huge. Yeah. Are there any good rivalries? Are there any budding rivalries? Because anything else is like short lived. Like people talked about us and the Grizzlies. That shit didn't. <laughs> I mean, we might be deteriorating a little bit. I hate to say it, but keep on selling all these fucking games. So it's like, so it's like, what you got there? I don't know. Maybe, maybe you could have like Bucks and Celtics be a major rivalry. I mean, Celtics and Heat, to be honest. Celtics and Heat. Is pretty solid. That's a pretty good rivalry, honestly. 
but I don't think that one is on blast as much. Because like when the Celtics and the Heat have faced each other, most of the time the other team is overmatched. Like usually usually the team that wins ends up going to the finals after. But like, I don't know. There's only been like one instance where they've been kind of, there's only been like a handful of instances where they go in like evenly matched. But even then, like, were people really going to say that the Celtics were going to beat the Nuggets in the finals? You know? So, you know, it's a, yeah. Because like, because like there's that other aspect. If this team doesn't have a legitimate shot at winning a championship, who cares? <laughs> who cares? Who cares? Like, in, in theory. I mean, it's obviously, I mean, to me, it's still interesting because I think rivalries are interesting. But, like, going into the NBA playoffs, you only suspect, like, a handful of teams end up, like, having a real chance at winning the finals. But that's not really the case in the NHL playoffs or the NFL playoffs and then, and or, like, even, like, MLB postseason. And then if you're talking, and then if you're talking about, like, the Premier League, I mean... Every game pretty much feels like a playoff game just because, like, uh, the ra- the race, the title race, the title race, and then also, like, qualifying for Champions League and then qualifying for U- Europa League. So, like, you have these, you have these stakes. You have these stakes. You have these stakes that are, like, attainable for other teams. But it's just like, you know, that's why us and the Grizzlies, I mean, you're talking about the team that has won on a regular basis and won championships on a regular basis. Sure, they don't have, like, that powerhouse that they did when they had, or even, like, before, even pre-Kevin Durant necessarily, but it was still a team capable of, like, winning the finals and attainable stakes. And I think that's kind of lacking because, like, I think Bucks and Celtics, if they face each other in the playoffs again, that would be a good-ass series. That would be a good-ass series. I wonder if we get another Minnesota versus Denver thing, like in sports in general, not necessarily a Timberwolves. I mean, yes, Timberwolves and Nuggets, as I'm saying that. It is the age of parity. We've now gone five straight years without a repeat champion. It almost champion. would be embarrassing to the rivalries you just mentioned to I try guess. to create them. So we, we try to create them if, if, like, there's two teams that are good and a guy gets fouled hard on a breakaway. We try to create a rivalry, like on yeah, the they spot, bring up like the in film. the moment. Six months ago, in this the moment, happened. oh, yeah. it's getting chippy out there. <laughs> you know, it's like no. It's well, just, that's the thing. You can't fucking you can't force it, because <laughs> like the best rivalries aren't the ones that are forced. So like, <laughs> maybe like gently force it or something by changing the structure. <laughs> it's 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 really does them an injustice. These other rivalries you just mentioned, I've been saying about that for a long time, and it's. It's rough for us in this industry because we would love to see it because it just brings so much more to your analysis. And when you sit down to watch a game, when that actually exists and it's not manufactured, uh, we manufacture a lot of them, these little mini rivalries that only last, you know, a couple of years or a few right. times they even play each other. Right. They end up never playing each other in the finals a lot of times. Right. Or, or in a high stake situation because one has higher expectations than the other. And then if the other ends up, and if the one with less expectations wins, then they end up getting bounced around by another team that has higher expectations. <laughs> yeah. These in little rivalries, like, like Philly, Boston. Like right. It's, it's a little bit better when those two teams face each other in the East in the regular season. Are we really going to go there with that? With lack of, you know, neither teams won a championship, you know, anytime in recent memory. So they don't exist to that extent. And it does help with these kinds of questions when you talk about who is that guy going to be and who is going to be his arch rival? Who's going to be the guy that's trying to take him down? We don't really have that right now beyond them. And it can't just be Jimmy Butler fucking dismantling everybody. Like, Jimmy Butler and the Miami Heat don't get to be the, the, the you know, he's not the Reggie Miller of this generation. But we didn't know in 2015 that we were about to get a rivalry with Golden State and, and the Cleveland Cavaliers. We didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, um, yeah, But I even go back to, I'm okay with... Yeah, because we came on the scene, I mean, I don't know... I don't think any of us were expecting like it all to happen because yeah, because that's the big talk. We were all <laughs> we were we were all just talking about this was this happened so quickly. And also, funny thing, one of my uh, one of my surrogate uncles and I were talking about how we would want Cleveland to win if it wasn't us involved. But you know, it's it's our time, so you know. And then obviously, obviously, uh, we know what happened later, so. 
Center Conference. I think that's where we got to get a little bit more. Like in the 90s, it was Jordan versus the Knicks. It was Jordan versus versus Indiana. Right. Like it was Jordan versus the yeah. Heat. Don't like there necessarily was, there, have yeah. to be teams that meet in the finals. Yeah. Right. Spurs and Mavs in the two thousands. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Those, those San Antonio Lakers. Lakers, 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 Lakers and Spurs. Yeah. That was a rivalry. Yeah. It was like almost whoever was gonna come we need out. Repeat right. Matchups. Exactly. Exactly. What RJ just said. <laughs> it was almost between them and that. And then even if we're talking about other sports like Cowboys and 49ers of the nineties. <laughs> but even because like because and that's the thing because the NBA is so like coveted about the finals and I mean I mean every 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 league is about winning the championship but you know it's just like there's just a bunch of meaningless bullshit <laughs> because around the NBA because it doesn't seem like it just seems like there's only a handful of teams that have a legitimate shot at actually winning a title that's why maybe Make the playoffs a little bit more exclusive. That could probably help. Year to year in the playoffs. Because the Golden State uh, Warriors thing from last year, this was last season because they had played in the previous season in the playoffs. That whole, every time they played in the regular season, it just, that thing felt so contrived to me. Yeah. You want to know why we might not get it either? Why? Player movement. Right. Player movement now. Oh, staying yeah. Staying with one team 10, 15 years, you're not getting four playoff series right. versus that one team for four years. Right. Like Jordan having to get past the Pistons or the Celtics. You're not seeing that that long stretch right. of player stability in there. You get guys right. moving. So now these teams might play against each other in multiple years with completely different rosters right. in two out of three years. So I mean, yeah, that does, that does kind of, I mean, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Because, I mean... Because like even something, even like you know, Capitals versus Capitals and Penguins. If we're going back to the NHL, because like that's that's Crosby versus Ovechkin. <laughs> that's still Crosby versus Ovechkin. Yes, the Cap- the Penguins pretty much always beat the Capitals, except for like two times, only two series where the Capitals actually have won. But you know, it's still the Capital. But like, it's such a big ho- hurdle, and it was still Crosby versus Ovechkin. <laughs> you know. It'd be nice if we could get multiple years over the next, let's say, five of conference semifinals or conference finals matchups of the Phoenix Suns and Dallas Mavericks with Devin Booker and Luka Doncic. Because those guys, I don't think, generally don't like each other. Each other. Right. Yeah. And that's the other thing. We need, we, we need more of that. And that's, that's, again, we can manufacture it at times. But the genuine kind of animus... Yeah. No, that's that's a good one because that actually exists there. So you're right. That would be phenomenal if we can get that. Several- See, because like, because like, it's not even just, but like, also regional because like fans play a part in, in like these rivalry because like proximity. Because I mean, talk about like Chicago, St. Louis, the Cardinals and the Cubs, and then the Blackhawks and the Blue. I mean, the the Blues and the Blackhawks. Well, I guess I did that wrong either way. But but still, you know, that's the thing, proximity. Proximity and just the concurrence, because Toronto and Montreal, we were talking like Leafs and <clears throat> what you call it, and I bet you the Kraken and the Canucks. I mean, I mean, we'll we'll see on that front, but the Kraken and the Canucks might develop a little something something, rivalry wise. So. Love the soccer analogy. As a Chelsea fan, we play so hard to deny our city rival Tottenham a league title, and it was like Christmas to us. Yeah. Chelsea was writing, and how hard Arsenal is struggling. These matches tend to feel very even, not this season, and carry a lot of pride. Some other rivalries like River Plate versus Boca Juniors and El Clasico actually take this to 11. One thing you touched on, which also doesn't apply to soccer in Europe, basically no team, yeah, yeah, there's that too. No team ever moves. Think of maybe one club. I mean, but, but to be fair though, I'm pretty sure with, I th- I'm pretty sure like most Broncos and Chiefs fans, their favorite, their le- and Charger fans, their least favorite team is still the Raiders. <laughs> so, did that and they basically lost most of their fans to a Phoenix club, Wimbledon, AFC, da, da, da. just unthinkable that a club would move from their neighborhood, let alone from their home city, have bought the land that the stadium sits on so owners can't move to a new area with the club name, for example. Fans stay connected to their team for generations because the club is almost always there for them. And that culture of moving around in the United States when a stadium needs to be built slash when owners fall out of love with a city. Yeah. Because we live in a, 
an environment full of greedy capitalists over here in Los Estados Unidos. One of my biggest issues with American sports is how teams can just get a, just up and leave the city if they decide they aren't going to get enough. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's straight up bullshit. Yeah, the team should be a part. Yep, it's straight up bullshit. But again, Los Estados Unidos full of greedy capitalists all across the goddamn board. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much a, cr- a constant amongst all these leagues. Because like, cause like, even in the NHL, like, fucking, the fucking Oilers, or the no, fucking Oilers with what they did to the city of Edmonton, and also the Flames with what they did to Calgary, you know, it's not that much different. Or at least from what I could see, it's not that much different from, like, the Vikings with Minnesota and, and the Bengals with Cincinnati. Like, it, it's, it's fucking disgusting, honestly. Because, like, the thing over here, it's all just gone from a game to a farce. Is really just what it is. Like how you mentioned the gameplay mechanics of esport, that's another thing that contributes to basketball. There are so many scores in it. Exactly. 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 There's su- such a high volume, high volume of scores where it's just like, oh, cool, cool, they scored another one, you know, whatever, in general. But, you know, then you take away the, the root of basketball, so that's why it would be a lot better it would be, there would be a lot more, there'd be a lot higher inv- investments we're talking about. <laughs> college basketball. Yeah, because like, like college, college basketball. College basketball. You know, Duke versus UNC. Duke versus UNC. I mean, I would perceive that as a bigger rivalry than anything, than anything in the NBA. I don't, I'm not even really a college basketball fan like that, but like it's Duke versus UNC. Yeah, so I think it's, it's more of a structural thing. I think making the playoffs, fixing, just having the structure, raise the stakes and make and make it so that it's not so obvious that like the top teams in each conference are most likely going to make it to the finals where it's just like pretty much a three-team battle. Whereas in the NHL, I mean, there's multiple instances where, where a lower seed ends up making it to the cup final. I mean, don't always win it. But, like, you know, a lower seed still makes it, like, you know, because, like, the Panthers of last year. And then, like, you know, the Kraken of last year eliminated the Avalanche in the first round. Like, the Kings, obviously, their 2012 playoff run, especially since they had four 3 0 series leads as an eighth seed. There are so many scores in an, in an NBA game that it's difficult to care about each one individually. In football, you may not get a single score all match, and every goal, therefore, is a truly special moment, exactly, to celebrate and to express your joy, and in some cases, really. Yep. And pretty much the same in hockey, except there is, that's what makes sudden death so fucking (laughs) stressful. Like, sudden death overtime is so fucking stressful, but it's so fucking exciting, too, just because, like, the next goal wins. It's just, like, that makes every single moment, especially come playoff time. I mean, in the regular season, it's obviously like, three-on-three over time for five minutes and then a shootout. But, like, in the postseason, it's another 20-minute overtime period and as many as needed until a team scores and ends the game. doesn't help that it feels like most NBA fans are exactly just NBA fans. They aren't fans of a specific team. They just watch the great players and teams. I mean, yeah, suppose. But, yeah. Raptor fans going crazy in Toronto. We just need to face the Celtics and Sixers deep in the playoffs over the next 20 years, being relatively even to get those fires burning hot. I could see that. Well, yeah, they're sad too. <laughs> the Raptors are pretty much owned in all of Canada, have a whole country <laughs> fan base. <laughs> Although, since they started winning more and raising ticket prices, a lot more big money casuals are coming, and the energy from back in 15 is lessening. Yeah. Yeah, because, yeah, because, like, ticket prices are higher now. Constant changes in trades make it hard to root for one team because a team you start with now because because you like their play style or culture will not be the same team in two or three seasons. Either the roster mentality would have completely changed or the coach is gone or GM has completely fucked their future by trading away picks in depth. Nothing about NBA teams is stable. But, I mean, but, like, the NHL, honestly, or arguably has more flux, <laughs> has more flux, and yet they have people who are fans of specific teams, and it's because it's because of um you know it's because different basketball. I think it's more so about the volume of the game of basketball 
and the structure, the seasonal and post-seasonal structure of the NBA. That's that's what I would perceive. Also, 82 games the teams play each other so often that we know who the better team is. In football, for example, big rivals play once, maybe twice a year. It gives us a date to circle and be hunt. Precisely. Precisely. Rivalry start in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, basically. I met on the teams, though. I became a Laker fan in the Kobe era, and I like LeBron, but ever since he got here, the team looks and feels different. And I actually thought Anthony Davis would fit this team quite well. Honestly, I thought that Lakers and Wolves was going to be a rivalry, but just because of the young talent that they had. But this is like six years ago when I was saying this. But like, obviously, the Wolves never really put things together with that like Wiggins, Cat, and Levine core. So, and then the Lakers ended up just because the Lakers they don't they don't ever they don't ever build they don't really build organically compared to other teams as much. They usually just like poach stars, or at least they poach like a big star. And whenever they like do build organically, it's usually because they end up acquiring, they end up getting the first pick or because like they um, <laughs> end up uh, trading for a different draft pick than the one that they chose. Like, I don't know, the Lakers, it's just so... <sighs> I mean, there's a reason why nobody likes the Lakers. Well, a lot of people don't like them. Toronto, Boston, Philly, New York, LA, Golden State fans are super passionate, sometimes toxic. I mean, to be fair, yeah. anyway, well, let's go back to some other comments here. This is a long thing. Holy shit. Also, in the NFL, you're constantly competing with the same three teams for a division title, which is like a mini championship, which makes rivalries really intense. And also because football is more physical as a game in lower volume. I've been watching the NBA for a long time and never really thought about this, and you are so correct. Other than Lakers Celtics, there's no really big rivalry that stood the test of time, and considering how friendly the players are with one another and lack of staying with one team for their playing career, I don't see any current teams starting a rivalry like Lakers Celtics. Also, because like other franchises don't really like do a lot. See, like Joe Lacob, I feel like would do a lot. Even if we have to like rebuild for like a few years, like hypothetically. Even if we would have to rebuild for a few years, like Joe Lacob has shown himself to be a capable owner. And now, sure, sure, there are certain cases where people pass their expiration date. But, like, you know, Joe Lacob has done really well with his organization. And obviously, that's why the Warriors are like high value, are a high value franchise now and one of the premier franchises of the NBA. Not quite Lakers Celtics level, but I mean, if we're talking about like twenty ten, like since the twenty tens, or at least the middle of the decade, they certainly got to be up there and up there now because of what has gone on since that point. Uh, teams are often not at the same power level for long enough to form rivalries. Surprised you didn't mention the NBA seasonal counterpart in the NHL. They just they play just as many games, let in the same amount of teams to the playoffs, and have a percent for teams moving a lot. Yet the NHL doesn't have those same problems. Because hockey has a lower volume. Let me not. <laughs> but no, hockey has a lower volume. And the other thing is it's more physical. Hits are encouraged. <laughs> they, like, every time there's a big hit, it doesn't happen as often as in, fo in a football game necess necessarily. But, like, whenever there's a big hit, the crowd cheers. <laughs> Went to Seattle once. Every person I had any... S Sort of extended conversation with talked about wanting the Supersonics back. I mean, of course they did. The NBA format kind of makes it harder for rematches to happen in close proximity. Like at the moment, more hardcore fans of the Raptors and Sixers dislike each other, and it's in big and it's in big part because of the two recent playoff series. But it would be difficult for them to end up in a position to play each other again, and the dislike, which is already kind of on again, off again, and at times one sided can go away entirely. I feel like this is generally true for NBA rivalries altogether. Yeah, because, like, cause like, think about us and the Clippers, too. It's, it's kind of similar to this, to what he's saying, in a way. One simple thing that shows how the rivalry on the NBA does, don't, doesn't really exist is, for example, Tatum, the face of the Celtics, using a Lakers jersey. Hmm. I'm from Brazil, and if a player of my team, Atletico Mineiro, I think, uses a jersey from our rival, Cruzeiro, us supporters would get insane at the point that the player could never step inside the club again. Yeah.
The true rivalry stands on the supporters hating the opposite team, and the players get our spirits. The opposite don't work very well because once the players retire, the rivalry dies. Me gusta la NBA y el basket. Es un juego divertido, pero seamos sinceros, es puro show. Los Yankees van a comer popcorn y mirar el celular. Prácticamente no sienten nada por sus equipos. Los brasileros y argentinos amamos nuestros colores. I mean, I don't, I don't know about that, to be honest. I mean, maybe, but... I mean, to a, to a degree, yes, but also to a degree, I don't know about that. La pasión que siento por el fútbol no se avecina con ningún otro deporte. Yeah, true. Los deportes en USA son puro negocio que un dueño de equipo puede llevar el equipo a... Yep, yep, yep. Again, capitalism, a capitalist society in a... los Estados Unidos. Y los antiguos fans seguirán apoyándolo. Yeah. Algo que es casi impensable en el fútbol. El equipo es la identi identidad, identidad y la historia de la ciudad o del barrio. Como dijo Eduardo Galeano en su vida, un hombre puede cambiar de mujer, de partido político o de, o de religión, pero no puede cambiar de equipo de fútbol. ¿Mm? Yeah. Allí reside la belleza de ese deporte hasta la muerte con mi equipo. Mm. All right, um, I, can, I should probably end this video off here now just because... I'm going to get way too deep into this topic if I go any further. If you want to check out the series winning buzzer beaters compilation I made a few years ago, there haven't really been any other ones. There haven't been any other ones to add to that compilation. So um, here you go. Check it out right here and uh, catch you in the next one.